and welcome back to English with Lucy. So I've made a video about improving your listening and I made one about writing very recently as well and I have made one on conversation but today the time has come to make a video about improving your reading and your reading comprehension because that's what you guys have been asking for. So this video is going to be jam-packed, i.e. really really full, of tips that will help you improve. So whether you want to improve because you need to do a reading exam or if you just want to read for pleasure and understand more, um, these tips are going to help you. Let's get started with the video. Now let's start with an easy one and one that you definitely will have heard before but it's so important I feel like I need to reiterate it and this is read the question. Now at school I remember being bored of my teachers telling me to read the question, always read the question, remember to read the question. But having worked as a teacher and having marked so many exams, oh my god, so many points are lost through people misreading the question. How many times have you seen a question that says answer with one example of blah blah blah? Well if you give two examples, most of the time you will not get the point because you've given too many examples or if they ask you to describe something and you provide a list it's not a description so you might lose that point so please just bear it in mind you need to read the question that was a pretty easy one let's get on to the next one now tip number two is all about practice but the best way to practice and this is by reading the news where better to find up to the minute current vocabulary that you can use in conversations that you're going to see in exams because often exams will use examples of current events or recent events. So as a teacher I am always on the lookout for the best news resources for my students. The Telegraph app have very kindly sponsored today's video but it wasn't a hard job for me because I already use the app on a daily basis. It is the news app that I recommend to my students. The reason I recommend this to my students is because it's trusted news content. You can use it both online and offline. So when you're connected to Wi-Fi, you can download all the news stories. And then when you're out and about, you can catch up on everything. It's excellent because you can click on the topic that is relevant and interesting to you because that's really important. Download it whilst you're at home or connected to Wi-Fi. And then when you're on your commute or you're out and about or you're somewhere where there's bad internet or at school, for example, you can catch up with all the latest news stories in the section that interests you most. So that's one thing that I love about it, the way that you can view everything offline as well as online. Now it's all very well reading the news every day, but how can you use the news to get as much vocabulary into your brain as possible? Well, I would encourage you to keep a vocab diary. My recommendation is keep it all on your phone. Use the Telegraph app, try and read the articles that are relevant and interesting to you, and then on the note function on your phone, keep a vocab diary. So you could date it, every day you can note down the words that you don't understand in the app and then when you get home you can fill in that diary, find out what the words mean and there you have a list to study from. Now you guys have probably heard of all the fake news and the untrustworthy news articles going around. The Telegraph is completely trusted, it's well written, it's well researched, it's current, it's up to the minute and you can view it both online and offline so it's completely accessible. I've left the link in the description box for anybody who wants to download it. I really do encourage you to do that vocab diary because it has transformed so many of my students' vocabularies. Right, tip number three relates back a little bit to tip number two. Um, but it's really important if you want to achieve the right amount of practice because practice does make perfect and that is schedule in reading time and you will be amazed at how much this can increase the amount you read every morning on your commute or, or during a break at work or school or you could be reading for pleasure so you could be setting aside an extra half an hour in the evening but make sure you make reading part of your routine because otherwise other things take priority and you will miss out because improving your reading and improving your other language skills really is like running a marathon. You can't cram it. You can't do something once and then expect to see a massive improvement. Uh, it needs to be little and often. That's why little tasks like scheduling in and writing a vocab diary are so, so effective. 
Let me know in the comments below when you most like to read or if you're going to schedule in a reading time and when that's going to be. Now, another way you could look at scheduling in reading time is setting yourself a reading goal. So depending on your level, schedule in a certain amount of articles every single day or however many chapters or pages of a book every single day. You know, I'm not reading to improve my English, I'm reading for entertainment and to keep up to date with current affairs. I like to set myself the goal of reading at least five articles in the morning whilst I have my coffee. I skim read them and it's just the right amount of time for me. Um, obviously if I have more time I'll read more, but I do like to start off the day with my set amount. Um, I can go over, but I can't go under. So look at scheduling in a goal for each day. Now the next tip is a little bit strange and it might not work for everybody, but it really, really works for me. It worked for me when I was doing my exams at university because I found studying so boring, but I needed to ingest a huge amount of articles, essays, textbooks, literature in general. And something I found incredibly helpful and something that made reading much more pleasurable and much more enjoyable was reading using the voice of a celebrity in my head. <laughs> and my celebrity of choice was always Stephen Fry, who I've mentioned in previous videos. He speaks with received pronunciation. He's very, very intelligent. He's a comedian. He has a lovely voice. And I used to read through all of the essays and literature for my university degree. In, um, in his voice. And I just got into a habit and I found that it made everything less dreadful. <laughs> and I've seen that other people do it too because I get messages on Instagram and comments on YouTube saying, whenever I read anything in English, I do it in your voice, Lucy. <laughs> and at first I thought, how strange. And then I thought, oh, <laughs> that's what I do to Stephen Fry. So um, yeah, pick a voice of somebody that you really, really like. And, um, and try using their voice in your head next time you read something. If you're reading to practice your English, let me know which person you choose in the comments, um, because I think it'll be quite funny to see who everyone chooses. Now, the next tip is for people who just really aren't satisfied with their reading comprehension. If you feel like you are underperforming in exams or you're not getting the most out of reading for pleasure, this tip's for you. I want you to step back from your reading and evaluate what's going wrong. Why? Why are you dissatisfied? In order to find a cure, you need to find the problem. You need to ask yourself why. Are you lacking vocabulary? Is it, is it that every other sentence you can't understand because you don't understand the words? Are you lacking technical vocabulary? So you're fine reading a general story, but if you read about politics or science, you're completely stumped. Stumped means confused. Is it that you really struggle with tenses? Is it that you can't work out which past tense is being used or if they're talking about the present or the future? Is it, rather than the language used, is it that you find reading too tiring or too boring? Is it that you run out of time in an exam? You need to think about what is going wrong and then find yourself a solution or ask somebody to help you find a solution. I can give you all the tips to apply to your reading, but if you don't work out what's wrong in the first place, you're going to have a tough time improving. So I invite you to think about your reading, what is going wrong, write it in the comments section, and let's all help each other to improve our reading skills. I can identify what's wrong with my reading when I read in Spanish, for example. I get bored, I skim read, I miss the point, and I don't try hard enough to understand the whole passage. What do I need to do? I need to work on summarising every paragraph or every page to make sure that I get a clear grasp of the context and just what's going on in the piece. So what's your problem? And if you can, what do you need to do to fight it? Comment down below. My next tip is going to sound weird as well, but it's something that really worked for me. And this is use a pen. And this helps you in a couple of different ways. One of the obvious ones, which you will know about, is you can underline words. But it is really, really important to underline key words. Or even cross out words that you think are not relevant as well. I wouldn't completely cross them out, um, but maybe put a line through if you think, nope, nope, this stuff doesn't matter, just the key words. 
But another use for your trusty pen is use it to help you speed read. So you use it as a pointer. This is going to really help anybody that struggles with reading a text in a short amount of time. In a lot of exams, you're under time pressure. Um, so you want to read as much as possible in the shortest amount of time. So I find that by using a pen and following under the words like this, I know I look ridiculous right now, but I want you guys to speed read, um, really helps me um, read much more quickly. You can try it out, see if it works for you. Take an article, read it first without the pen, read it again with the pen, time yourself, see which one is quicker. It might take some getting used to, but learning to speed read and using a pointer, it can transform the way you perform in reading exams. Right guys, that's it with the tips for today. I really, really encourage you to click on the link in the description box and download the Telegraph app. I've already said how great it is. It was what I was using before and it was an absolute pleasure to be invited to work with them because I love recommending things that I truly believe in. I'm confident that if you set yourself a goal of reading two, three or five articles a day, for example, you really, really will improve your reading comprehension over time. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram and I've got my Twitter and I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.